When it comes to indie games, there are two types. They're either like Valheim or Reign of Kings, like Portal Knights or Cube World, like Rust or like Rust. Indie games are always a hit or miss experience, and I've made a lot of videos covering some of the most disastrous ones and some of the best ones. It's all a matter of perspective. If you think a game is bad, then I respect your opinion. Unless you say that about Stardew Valley, then I think you're a f***ing idiot. Farming games are one of those weird genres of games that, in theory, shouldn't be that popular. whoop de doo let's go plant some wheat and drive a virtual tractor around for a thousand hours. Why? 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 I mean, I do have 1900 hours in Unturned, so I can't say much. But the thing is, these types of games are actually extremely fun. Even the more monotonous ones, like Farming Simulator, can be a great 5.4 hours of fun. The trend got popular with a game called Harvest Moon, and ever since, farming games keep coming out on a regular basis. But none of them are as iconic as Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is a game where you spend every waking moment of your life being both a figurative and literal Santa Claus to try to win over a girl who eats rocks from the museum gift shop as a hobby. Mmm, quartz. In between trying to convince Abigail that you'll supply her with a lifetime of depression and amethyst, you farm, mine, socialize, fight monsters, and also flirt with all the other villagers behind Abigail's back. The game is a mix of a farming tycoon, an RPG, and a life sim, and even that doesn't fully explain what Stardew Valley is truly about. Even more impressive than the overwhelmingly positive reviews and insane sales numbers on every platform imaginable is the fact that all of this was done by one person. One person made a true masterpiece like this with deep character development, an awesome story, and nearly zero bugs, but yet a team of 20 people are taking like 65 years to make 7 Days to Die into something playable. It's genuinely impressive. So, what's so good about Stardew Valley to warrant over 10 million sales and a ranking of number 7 on the highest rated Steam games of all time? Why is Stardew Valley one of my favorite indie games ever made? And why have I spent days of my life trying to befriend a virtual blacksmith with the personality of garlic powder? We're gonna answer all of those questions and talk about why Clint is a trash tier character who doesn't deserve the gifts I give him to try to win him over as a friend, in today's video talking about why Stardew Valley is so awesome. If you like this game or this video, drop a comment explaining why and maybe share the video with a friend. And this, uh, my wife Oksana, she's a boring. I gotta take a break from my failing marriage to dive into the history of how this game came to fruition. Developed by a very wholesome guy named Eric Barone, Stardew Valley started as a mere Harvest Moon clone that was supposed to be a project to help him get better at game development and land a job. But he quickly realized that he could make something truly special, and the game was announced on Steam Greenlight in 2012. He partnered with Chucklefish, and after years of development, released a single-player version of the game in February of 2016. Within months, he had received absolutely astronomical amounts of praise and recognition for his beautiful creation, and people knew that Stardew Valley was something very exceptional. And that is still the case today, with the game having well over 25,000 concurrent players even in July of 2021. So what specifically makes this game so good? Well, everything. But in order to cover all that comes to mind, we need to start with the core of the game and the place where it all begins. The story. Stardew Valley follows the story of you, the main character. Wow, that was the dumbest thing I've ever written. Anyways, you receive a rundown and desolate farm from your grandfather after wanting to escape the misery of a corporate 9 to 5. This farm is located outside of a place called Pelican Town, and you move there to take over the farm and bring it back to its former glory. But you aren't in this alone, and you end up having to work with the citizens of Pelican Town to form relationships and build up the town as well. There's an old dilapidated building called the Community Center, and if you decide to partner with the town to fix it up, you can turn it into a thriving community. You can make friendships and form relationships along the way and create something beautiful. Or you can support the Joja Mart, the lifeless corporation that's causing Pelican Town so much grief to begin with. Or so you may think at first glance. More on that in a bit. As you upgrade your farm and abilities, you begin to collect different resources that you can then throw into the community center to complete the repairs and progress in the game, unlocking new perks as you go. If you decide to follow this path, which is what most people do, the progression is very logical and the game is extremely rewarding. 
It's a big part of how the game works and it's the next thing that I want to talk about. When you come into Pelican Town, everything is pretty much in shambles. The bus is broken, the minecart doesn't work, and there are two bridges that have fallen into disrepair, and pretty much everything is going downhill. If you donate items to the community center and fill up the various bundles of items that you get as you progress through the game, you can fix these things and bring the town to its former glory. It's by far my favorite way to play through the game, and it sets goals that you work to accomplish along the way. But after a couple playthroughs, I figured that you may want to step back and ask yourself, why is the town so bad in the first place? How did Pelican Town's infrastructure become so obsolete? What is the mayor doing with the town taxes? Well my friend, now for your first dilemma. The game makes you assume that the guy who looks like the bad guy is, well, the bad guy. And you hear this from the perspective of the mayor and from the general store owner named Pierre. And why do you think Pierre says he's bad? Well, because he's the competition, and it's hurting the only thing that Pierre cares about, his profits. But these themes that I mentioned are themes that you could dive into further if you decide to, but who cares because more stinks in the community center is way cooler. That's the story, and like I said, it creates the foundation for the rest of the game and encourages you to do the things that you do. But what exactly do you do? There are four seasons in the game, and it constantly cycles between them as time goes on. The main focus of the game is going to be your farm, and in each season, you can grow season-specific crops that all have different properties. There's a total of over 50 plantable and harvestable crops and fruit trees, and the amount of money you make depends heavily on what you decide to grow. This large range of items can really change up your gameplay experience, and you can strategize to grow things that will help you reach your goals. Yeah, you can grow the crops themselves to sell, but you can also use them as part of your overall strategy. For example, you can grow the fairy rose next to a beehive to make a rare and expensive form of honey. Or you can grow grapes to make wine and poppies to make, uh, decorative floral arrangements. I found myself trying to plan out my farm to be both productive and to look good. There's something so appealing about having a nice looking farm that makes you a lot of money and I love the process of trying out new crops to see how they look and how much money they make me. On top of all the crops, there are quite a few different animals and facilities to deepen the farming experience even further. You can raise chickens that you forget to feed, or cows that you forget to feed, or even ostriches that you also forget to feed. Then, adding another layer, you can take the products produced by these animals and combine them with other farmed or foraged ingredients to make food dishes or specialty products like mayonnaise. These other facilities are quite important, especially when winter rolls around and you're dying of boredom due to a lack of farming. And finally, when it comes to farming, there are a lot of different tools that you can use in advance to make the experience smoother. For example, in the beginning of the game, you have to manually water all of your plants every day like you live in rural Vietnam, but as you gain money and levels, you can get sprinkler systems that do all of the work for you. These various crops, animals, and upgrades makes for a very in-depth farming experience that gives you a near infinite amount of enjoyment in a simple and easy to comprehend package. While farming is usually a majority of your focus, you really only have to plan, prepare, and then wait. Other than the occasional watering and harvesting, farming doesn't take up a lot of time. And time is something that's very important in Stardew Valley. You see, the game goes in a cycle of days. Every night you go to sleep and the game summarizes what all you accomplished that day. Then you wake up and start over in the morning. As the days pass, the seasons change and it ties in directly with what you're doing on your farm and around Pelican Town. I often would start the day by farming and watering my plants, and then I would go into town, talk to some of the NPCs to build up my relationships with them, and then head over to the mines to fight monsters, or go over to the ocean to catch some fish. You have to hop between activities to accomplish your goals before the season ends, and every minute of your day is important. In theory, this may sound a bit daunting and stressful, but remember, there aren't any pressing goals in this game. You can either rush to rebuild the community center and beat the game, or you can take your time and enjoy the process, which is often what I found myself doing. It's a relaxing and calming experience, and rushing it to reach some meaningless goal takes away from what the game is meant to be. So take your time, take a step back and enjoy planning your farm, meeting new people, and exploring the world of Stardew Valley. One of my favorite things about Animal Crossing is the ability to collect all of the items on the island. It's always extremely satisfying to see how far I've progressed, how many bugs I've caught, and what's still out there awaiting discovery. 
But Stardew Valley does this even better than Animal Crossing, and it makes trying to discover all of the potential crops, fish, resources, and artifacts around the island an extremely rewarding experience. When you find a mineral or artifact that you don't know anything about, you can take it to the museum and put it on display on the shelf. As you get more items, Gunther will give you little rewards like decorations, and you can walk in at any time to see your collection grow. I always tried extremely hard to find more artifacts when I played Stardew. Every time I got a new resource that I hadn't yet discovered, I would set it aside and take it to the museum as soon as possible. It was one of the most satisfying parts of the game for me. While the museum holds the minerals and artifacts, there's also a catalog to track everything else that you find along the way. You can see how many of the 60 plus fish you've managed to catch, or how many of the countless food recipes you've made in your overpriced kitchen. And on top of this, the catalog goes quite well with the community center. You can easily see which items you need in order to fill up the remaining bundles and repair the broken facilities around the center. It all flows really well and makes for a super unique experience that keeps you interested in the world of Stardew Valley. Now now, I know the suspense has been killing you. What the hell's going on with the Rock Eater, or the guy who behaves like a jar of mayonnaise when you give him a gift? Or the corrupt mayor, or the homeless man who gets sympathy for digging in the trash while I get yelled at for doing the same thing? The characters in Stardew Valley are the best part of the game. If you wanted to farm, you could go play Minecraft or Farming Simulator, or any other game with farming. People play Stardew to fulfill their dreams of wifing up a weird-ass e-girl that eats rocks, or befriending a grumpy old man in a wheelchair. It's much different. Each of the villagers in Pelican Town and the various characters that you meet while playing the game are super unique, each with their own personalities and quirks. There are different benefits to befriending different people, and everyone does their own thing throughout the day. The game feels truly alive, and it seems like all of these villagers would continue to live their lives even if you weren't there. I love walking around the town and seeing what everybody has going on in their lives and seeing what they want to talk about. I like when I go to the mines and get to interact with Linus, who I'm trying way too freaking hard to befriend after I accidentally was a jerk to him early in my playthrough. You can gain hearts with each of these characters and increase your friendship level by giving them gifts, completing quests, giving them more gifts, and oh my god, why do these people need so many things to become friends with you? One of the best parts of the game, and one of the reasons why so many people love it, is the romance system. Say you're getting a bit lonely on the farm and you want some company and free items on a regular basis. Well, go get married. Once you reach an 8 heart level with a single character, you can give them a bouquet of flowers and show your romantic interest in them. When you reach 10 hearts, you can propose and get married, they then move in with you, and you can have kids and wallow in the misery of marriage on a daily basis. There are 6 dudes and 6 girls who are single characters in the game, and you can pursue any or all of them if you're interested. Speaking of which, if you've ever played Stardew, who do you think the best romanceable character is? My friends and I were having an argument about it, and I want to see what everyone thinks, so drop a comment below with your reasoning. Everything that I've mentioned so far is a lot of fun on its own, but it's 10 times better when you're doing it with up to 3 of your best friends. The game has an outstanding multiplayer feature where you all share a farm and work together to bring Pelican Town back to its former glory. It takes the amazing single player experience and expands it directly into multiplayer for it to be enjoyed as a group. Some of my favorite memories in this game are the ones where my friends and I are just goofing off and trying our best to make things work, without a real goal or focus whatsoever. I thought it only blew up certain things. <laughs> Both solo and with friends, you could easily get hundreds of hours out of the vanilla version of the game. But raise that number to infinity once you add the modding and community found in Stardew Valley. This game has one of the best communities out of any game I've ever played. The memes on Reddit are hilarious, and everyone seems to be at a common consensus of what Stardew Valley has accomplished and how it's changed indie games forever. This is compounded when the modding comes into play. The game has full modding capabilities, so there's everything from item spawners to overhauls to anime mods, and there's even one that reskins horses to look like cats. It's amazing, and the mods allow for countless ways to customize the game to your liking. Stardew Valley is a once in a decade indie game experience. It's given Eric Barone an outstanding reputation in the indie game community, and it's had an impact on countless people's lives. A lot of reviews mention people going through things and how this game helped them to deal with reality. And I could totally see it. It's one of those games that has a lot of charm behind every aspect of it. So if you haven't played Stardew Valley, I definitely recommend checking it out because it's 1000% worth the price. 
Also, while I'm on the topic, check out my last video talking about meaningful games to see some of the other games that make you think about life or that could help you get through things. I'll put a link in the description below. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. Do you play Stardew Valley? If so, what do you think of it? Is it one of your favorite games of all time, or do you think it's not as good as people say? Let me know in the comments. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, please subscribe and share this video with a friend. I will see you guys next time, and peace.